Welcome back to another episode of All About the Brand. I'm your host, Courtney Sargent. Thank you so much for listening. Today, we're talking about your website, and this is actually one of my favorite, favorite subjects because I like to geek out on websites. But here are six things you should and should not do to your website, okay? All right, and we've all been to websites that didn't catch our attention. We've all been to websites that were full of text, no images, no organization whatsoever. Even worse, we've all been to websites that didn't have any contact information. And I can go on and on and on here. Um, But we've also been to websites that were beautiful. Websites that were easy to use, easy to navigate, easy to consume the information and find exactly what you need. Websites that spoke directly to you. So in this episode, I've put together a list of six do's and don'ts for your current or your next website. So from this list, you may you may say, hey, I need to change this on my website uh, or I'm in the process of creating a new website. So here are these six do's and don'ts. You ready? Number one, do include contact information always. Don't care what kind of website you have. Please include contact information. Um, It could just be a general contact form, even if you don't want people to get in contact with you. I don't know why you wouldn't. But even if you don't want them to at least include a form so that people feel like, you know, you're able to be reached and, you know, it just makes them feel good. So your phone number, you can put that on there, your email address um, or, as I said, just a general contact form. And that should be clearly visible because if people don't know how to contact you, You'll lose business every single time, right? You'll lose leads every single time if they cannot contact you. You don't want people to have to find it. (laughs) People are generally lazy and don't want to search for your contact info uh, unless they really, really, really want to do business with you or get in contact with you. Okay, so number one, do include contact information. Number two, big pet peeve of mine. Don't have too much text on your website. Oh, it is so annoying to go to any web page that has a gang of text on it. 80% text, very little images. You don't want to do that. Or worse, I've been to some websites that don't have any text, any uh, images at all. I, I'm telling you, I've been a web designer for the good part of my life, over a decade, and I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You do not want to have too much text on your website. Honestly, whenever this has happened to me, I've immediately just exit off the off the site. Unless it's like a blog post, like you expect to read a blog post. But even in that, you want to have images or video that people can um, that'll keep their attention. The human eye has been trained to see variations. And so our minds have been trained to perceive larger text to be more important and smaller text to be less important. And if all of the text on your website is the same size with no images, the visitor's mind registers that, you know what, this is not important and I'm going to leave. There's not enough here to highlight. Humans are visual beings. So give people something to look at and not just read. Okay, that's very, very important. So have a I wish I could talk more about this and have more time, but maybe maybe another time. But have a text hierarchy, larger text, more important, smaller text, um, just general text. Okay. All right. That's number two. Don't have too much text. Number three, do have strong call to actions. A call to action, if you do not know, is referred to as a CTA. It's something that you want your visitors to do, like call, email, subscribe, download, watch, click here. One thing I will highly recommend is to create an email list and embed the subscribe form on your website. Okay, that way, um, People can sign up for your email list. You can send a regular newsletter or email blast to your subscribers and you're creating that relationship with them through there. You may even give them a discount or a helpful resource in exchange for their email address. That's a call to action. You can also send helpful tips or advice related to your business or industry. Um, All in all, having strong call to actions is all about being and staying connected with your visitors creating relationships with them and eventually converting them into customers if that's your end goal. Okay. Number four, don't put your social network icons at the top. This is very, very, uh, this is popular for people to do. And I highly discourage it. And you may think that this is counterintuitive because I want people to, to know I'm on social media. That's good. Everybody's on social media. 
I want people to find me. That's good. They're going to find you. So hear me out. When a visitor lands on your homepage and one of the first things they see is your Facebook icon, what do you think they will do? They're going to click on it. And when they do, they exit your website without getting the information that they needed. They are completely distracted from the whole purpose of why they went to the site in the first place. And we all know when you get on Facebook, you sucked into this black abyss (laughs) <laughs> never to return back to your previous task, never to return to do the thing that you actually needed to do. Like sometimes I open a Facebook app. Has this ever happened to you where you just open it and you just completely forget you blank out, you see something and you don't even know what you're there for anymore because you get distracted and you start scrolling and you click and then you come and then you like, then you like, wait, it's 30 minutes past. I haven't, what was I doing again? <laughs> so that's what happens. And you don't want that to happen to your website visitors. Okay. So to avoid this, put your social network icons at the bottom of the page. This gives visitors an opportunity to actually click around your website, scroll through, find the information that they need. um, And eventually they'll end up at your website. Okay. Visitors come to your website for a reason. Don't give them a reason to leave too soon. All right. That's number four. Don't put your social network icons at the top. Number five, do have a clear message. This is one thing that many, 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 many people overlook. Many people overlook. There's nothing worse than someone visiting your website and they're confused about what it is that you do. This goes back to branding. That's what this whole podcast is about. It's about branding and creating a brand, creating an experience, a reputation for yourself and or your business. So spell it out. Seriously, spell it out. Leave no room for guessing or anonymity. That is not sexy. (laughs) It's not. So what you want to do is have a catchy headline, have interesting copy, website copy. If you don't know what that is, it's website text that engages people and intrigues your visitors. The number one goal is to convert those visitors into something, whether it's a follower or a subscriber or a customer or just a loyal fan. Okay. That's the goal of your website or or to inform them, whatever your goal is, that's what you want your website to do for you. So you got to have a clear message. And this is just branding overall. Always have a clear message about who you are and what you do. And if you're not clear on who you are and what you do and what service or product that you offer, you'll never reach whatever goal you're trying to reach. So be clear and be concise. All right. That's number five. Do have a clear message. Finally, last but not least, number six, don't ever, 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 ever use Adobe Flash. Now, (laughs) you may be thinking, Courtney, who uses Flash? You would be surprised. You would be surprised. And really, I probably should update this to don't use outdated technology and software on your website. Listen, Adobe Flash technology is great, but it's outdated. It's incompatible. Um, even iframes to a certain extent is outdated and incompatible with many browsers today. And especially mobile, mobile devices, flash doesn't work on mobile devices, HTML five replace flash. There's a lot of things that you can do with HTML fives. I'm kind of geeking out at the moment, but, um, it was cool back in the day in the early two thousands, you know, um, and it can give your website a pop, but there are so many different replacements for it now that you don't have to go back to that. Now, a a lot of young people don't even know what flash is. So I know I'm talking over some of you guys this head, but for those of you that do know what flash is, don't use it. Use HTML five, use JavaScript, use jQuery. There's a lot of things that you can, um, a lot of different technologies that you can use to, that is uh, compatible with browsers today. Okay. And you want everything to be compatible on mobile. So that's number six. Don't use outdated technology. All right. Um, I hope this was informative. Unfortunately, that's all the time that I have for the today. If you have any questions, please hit me up. Um, my email address is Courtney S Sergeant at gmail.com. C O R T N E Y S S A R G E N T at gmail.com. If you have any questions, just hit me up right there. That's my personal email address. It's the first time I've given this out, but that's just how transparent I am. So if you have any questions or need any help or advice, just please let me know. Um, and if you need help building a website or maintaining or updating your current one, um, don't call me. No, I'm just playing. 
I'm semi-retired from from the industry, from graphic design and web design. But um, I will help you, or I'll help you uh, find the right asset, or you know, lead you in the right direction. And if you're a business owner and you don't have time uh, to worry about your website, what you should and shouldn't be doing on your website, you need to hire somebody that that does have the time. That's what they do for a living. Okay, so that's all the time that I have for today. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this was helpful. And until next time, I'm wishing you all of the success you're willing to attract into your life. Let's make it better by going up together. I love you. Peace.